Hello there, folks. Thanks for joining in. So this is part two of the fiberization series that we are uh, doing as part of STL Tech Learning. And uh, people who could not watch the first part, I would suggest going to the link at the bottom of this particular video and you know click on the link to see the part one. It was very interesting. People who have seen, thank you for showing so much love and you know liking the video and all those things. In part one, if you would recall, we discussed about the basics of fiberization and you know different communication mediums that we have. In the world today and fiber and microwave and copper and all those things and we compared it along different parameters say a cost and the bandwidth capacity and all those things and eventually we came to the conclusion that fiber is the most disruptive medium of technology available to mankind today in the second part we are going to take one step ahead and discuss more about the technology that enables fiberization Right. And how is this technology helping shape the communication industry altogether? When people talk about 5G and us by 4G and you know 6G coming into the future, how is fiberization related to all of this? And uh, we will discuss all these things in the video today. And uh, there are certain directives or you know certain instructions that would come around for the telecommunications industry at large because a major chunk of the communication industry is telecom. And you know there would be some suggestions, some ideas for the telecommunication industry to implement. Now to do all of this, we uh, have Sudipta Bombik with us today. People who have seen the first part already know about him. People who are watching this video for the first time. Sudipta Bhomik is the Head of Applications and Standards Engineering at STL. He has been in the industry for 22 years now, pretty much a veteran I would say, has more than 40 research publications in his name and several patents. He has also been a contributing member to Global Standards Organization of Optical Fiber and Telecommunications. Now Sudipta, thank you so much for joining in. It's been a pleasure to host the video with you earlier as well and it's always a delight to have you with us speaking about fiberization which is I think very core to you know what you do and what you love. So the house is open to you. Thanks, Achyut. Glad to be here again. Looking forward to discuss technological aspect of fiberization. And the last time around, we discussed about different technologies, right? So you, you talked about the microwave, you talked about fiber, and you talked about a little bit about the copper uh, infrastructure as well. My first question to you is, when I speak to a particular telecom company, or, you know, I speak to a particular internet service provider, I realize that, you know, there's just not one technology that they use to provide internet or connectivity to their end consumers, right? It's a mix of different technologies that they use. So what is your take on how are we managing all of these technologies together? The next generation network that uh, OneLine, wireless, IoT and all multiple technologies are going to coexist and effective asset utilizations will remain a prime focus for all the service providers. Now, all the multiple technologies will be supported by a converged backhaul and of course it will remain a fiber optic network and the network will be diverged towards the aggregate and the access layers. The multiple termination points of multiple technologies are connected by the fiber optic cable for a common fiber ring and where it is a cell tower or a small cell or a FTTH like a home connection or it is a public or any private enterprises. So the converse topologies will create a need of high fiber count cables and particularly in the aggregate and the access layers. Got it. So when I actually step out of my house, the first thing that I see is the access essentially. And when I go further down the in connectivity path, I see aggregate and then further down the intercity network within a country, I would say as a backbone or something, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's good, right? Sure. So, uh, you know, that brings me to my second question. And that is when you say that fiber is such an imperative converged network where all these microwave and fiber and, you know, fixed wireless access and all of these things survive or, you know, work together to actually provide internet connectivity to the end consumers. What does it mean for the network infrastructure at last? Especially given the fact that, you know, people are gung-ho about 5G. Well, um, by the current capacity of a 3G or 4G tower site is around 1 Gbps. But for the 5G service, the capacity need to be increased to a 10 to 2 Gbps. And the number of all cells for 5G densifications, for example, around 50 Mbps per user, would be almost 10 times 
compared to the 4G macro size. And to achieve even a higher data range, like a 1 Gbps per user using a millimeter wave kind of a, a technology, and again integrate it with a other different technologies and the services like IoT, the number of small cells to be installed every 100 meters, which is currently the 3G it is around every 10 kilometer or 4G it is around every 2 kilometers. Again, this each small cells and to be connected with the fiber optic cables. Uh, there is another also point we should consider here, like uh, in the 5G environment, the indoor accessibility or the experience faced by the user in the indoor environment. So because of the poor penetration of the high frequency bands used in 5G, an outdoor antenna cannot provide a 5G experience in the indoor environment. As most of the mobile data, I think about 85% is consumed in indoor and which is expected to increase in 5G. So an indoor in fiber infrastructure need to be built and it is driving towards a concept called fiber to the ceiling or FTTC where many indoor antennas connected with optical fiber cable and provides a very high bandwidth services in a large building like a railway station or a shopping malls or airports or many large enterprises. So when you consider, say, for example, let's consider a city where, you know, we have uh, somewhere around 20,000 people living per square kilometer. Let's say that is the density. And uh, as a telco, if I'm a telecom company, I I see a potential market and I see, hey, there are 20,000 people living there and they are prospective customers for my internet connection or my voice connection. How do you go about planning a fiber network or a fiber infrastructure around that particular locality? important point to consider is the deployment cost and the right of the way that is ROW must remain a big challenge uh, for the, all the telecom operators or installers. If you talk about uh, India, that ROW cost uh, is varying from a 0.7 to 7 million rupees per kilometer in some metro cities. So a, a futuristic optical fiber cable deployment strategy is the need of the hour. Is it a very straightforward calculation to actually arrive at the minimum fiber count that a telco should have in their network when it comes to a population density of say 20,000 people? Kilometer. So when we are going to have a some specific geography in mind and you need to have a, all the input informations. For example, that the population density, the how many homes uh, need to be connected, what is the number of families, and also the family members, how many large enterprises in the vicinity of that particular area, and uh, what is the kind of a mobile services you wanted to explore, and what kind of bandwidth you'd like to give to the users in that particular vicinity. Then you can do a, a rough calculation based on the bandwidth requirement, whether this is for home use, for enterprise use, and for the mobile uses and based on the different termination points for example if you talk about home you have to give a fiber to the home service and the fiber to the home you have to keep around at least the one pair of fiber to each and every home for enterprise you have to again give a couple of pairs of fiber and small cell again you have to give around six pairs of fiber for each and every small cell to create a coverage around 360 degree coverage if we have all the informations available with you and you have a hot kind of network topology you wanted establish whether it is a point to multiple point or point to point or having having a massive demo or kind of a millimeter wave technologies uh, for a 5G kind of experience and then you can calculate how many fiber termination points we need to have and uh, from that you can calculate that how many fiber you need to have in a cable to provide a service for all the termination points so it will help you to avoid a multiple cable deployment rather than we can have a one cable which can be terminated and give a service to any such termination points and users. Thank you so much for that. That was very detailed. Now, when we speak with the telecom companies and what we realize is that, you know, everybody says, yes, fiber forms a major chunk of their capital expenditure plans, major chunk of their network strategy, having a very robust fiber network. But the two most important challenges that they always face is one, deployment cost of a fiber network is exorbitantly high. I think what you spoke about ROW earlier, that is a major contributor to that particular deployment cost. The second one is they want to get 
it done as soon as possible. Now, what is STL doing in this particular space? STL has been developing many innovative solutions to make fiber relations easy and fast. Today, I can discuss few of those. To start with the optical fiber domain, that uh, STL launched a next generation optical fiber. We called it Stellar, which is basically a IGT G657 A2 standard compliant ultra band insensitive fiber. A Stellar is almost 40 times band insensitive compared to the traditional G6 5-2D fiber. So overall, a Stellar helps in creating a healthy and robust fiber network, which is termination friendly and repair resilience. And if we see that this is basically optical fiber domain, if we go to the optical fiber cable space, STL also came out with an innovative product called Yogalite, which is basically a micro module cable. So micro module is a, a smaller and flexible tube replacing traditional loose tube. So micro module has many advantages like its skin free nature, uh, which eliminates fiber break or the network outrage due to the tube king. It can be stored in a smaller space, helping in reducing the footprint of the classic posers. And also in addition to its flexibility, a semi-dry micro module can be stripped by just a fingertips and it doesn't need any stripping tool. And by this way, it helps in reducing fiber end access and misspent access time by almost uh, 30%. And overall, this HTL's Yogalai solution helps in first time right cable deployment. One more solution I would like to mention here. The another innovation uh, happened in this ribbon technology. So to create a compactness of a ribbon cable, which has been a preferred design for high fiber count cable to reduce the splicing time, the ribbon technology is also evolving. So STL came out with a new technology called this intelligently bonded ribbon or IBR technology. And in IBR, the adjacent fibers in a ribbon are not bonded along the length rather than some specific distinctive locations. That means the ribbon can be rolled over to make a bundle which ultimately increase the packing density significantly and help in reducing the overall diameter of the cable. For example, diameter of a 6912 fiber IVR cable is just a 29 millimeter. Even over 10,000 fiber count cable can be produced uh, with these technologies. Uh, when the fiber is coming out at the end of the cable, it can be made straight like a traditional flat ribbon for easy splicing. Another new type of ribbon, we called it uh, compact ribbon, which is basically a traditional ribbon with 200 micrometer fiber. It can be made with 250 micrometer pitch uh, to splice with the traditional ribbon or a 200 micrometer ribbon. So the compact ribbon cable is uh, to reduce the stack height by almost around 30% and thus help in reducing the overall diameter of the cable. Thank you so much. So I understand there's something called a compact ribbon, there's something called intelligently bonded ribbon, a micro module and a stellar fiber. I think essentially what you want to say is, guys, please have optical fiber cables which are high in fiber count because you need to have your network future proof. Thank you so much for that. That was very insightful. Now, you know, I think uh, all these telecom companies, all these internet service providers and communication service providers have a cheap technology technology officer, a chief network officer who decides how the network would evolve at their end, right? And what is their network strategy going forward? Is there any specific message that you would want to give to these gentlemen and to these people, to these CXOs? I would say that a futuristic optical fiber cable deployment strategy is the need of the hour. And I'd like to give more emphasis on three points here. First is that the technologies that we are going to use for the deep and dense fibration is to help us to reduce the ROW cost, where the existing spare ducts and empty space of the spare ducts for the bound bill projects need to be utilized. And the cable and fiber technology is to be selected in such a way that it help us to reduce the ROW cost in deployment for the deep and dense fibrations. Another point I have to highlight that the optical lifetime of the solution and that need to be increased beyond the 25 years and that can be achieved by selecting a next generation pen insensitive on the low loss fiber because optical lifetime is uh, remain another big challenge for the many telecom operators in developing countries like India. So the new technologies when you, when you are going for a deep and dense fiberization we need to have a fiber network which is healthy and robust and should be remain over a lifetime of a fiber.
and the last point i want to emphasize here that adoption of a new technologies a cto should be more open adopt new technologies like ultra high fiber count cables and also the customized cables because when you are deploying optical fiber cable the various geographies the one cable may not be suitable for all kind of deployment environment you have to select the cable which is best suitable for that particular deployment environment and that particular applications so overall these new technologies will bring many operational benefits for example it will make the network repair resilience it will reduce the mttr mean time to repair it will increase the lifespan and also of course it has to be a comfortable with the existing network and overall all of this is going to help in that fast and easy deep and dense fiberization thank you so much for that sudha i think that was very insightful and uh, so i think we'll just finish it off over here and uh, i look forward to doing more such sessions with you because it is always a delight to speak with you on fiberization and fiber and optical fiber cable thanks for you uh, thanks for yes sure we'll discuss okay. again